every RVer was a newbie at some point. And in a lot of ways, we still are newbies. We wish we knew then what we know now, though. If you're watching this video right now, you're either an RV newbie or maybe you're thinking about camping as your form of family vacation, get away from corporate life, a little adventure. That's why we decided to do it. And you might be a little nervous. It's out of your comfort zone and you have a lot of questions and that's okay. I know for us, you know, when we first got started, I didn't know how to hook up the septic hose. He did tons of research. I didn't know how to do anything. He I didn't... watched KYD videos all day long. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody teased me about it. I would be on my little elliptical machine in the family room and my kids would be like, well, are you watching another RV video? And I'm, yeah, you know. I wanted to learn everything I could. I wanted to learn everything about RVing, and I probably spent six months doing that before the yes. first time we got into our rental RV right. and took off in California. But don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Just jump in and have a good time. It's much easier than you think. It yeah. really is. But I wish, we do wish we knew yeah. some of what we know now right. back then. Right. And so, you know, we've kind of... And we're still learning all the time. We are. It never ends. Mm -hmm. And things always break. Things mm -hmm. always have to be fixed. I just broke the thermostat last night. Yes, you did. Was... <laughs> There'll be a new video about how to install a thermostat. Which is great. We thought it would be kind of a cool idea to come up with like a top 10 list of things right. for RV newbies to know. And hopefully that'll help you to ease into your RV experience, know a little right. bit more about what to do when you get started to make things go a little easier and a lot less stressful and overwhelming for you right so anyway i'm mike i'm susan and we are rv blogger and we came up with our youtube channel and our website and even our facebook group which is right. growing by leaps and bounds right hopefully That's we'll amazing. see you in there we hope you join it but um we created all of this because when we were rv newbies and we were learning all these things it was enjoyable for us to kind of go through the process and we thought you know mm -hmm. Let's show others what we're learning, mm -hmm. and then everybody can benefit from, from what we've right. gone through. And so that's kind of how it all came Because we've made some bad decisions. We made yeah, some yeah. emotional decisions. <laughs> Things break along the way. So we thought, you know, this would be a perfect opportunity to be able to document this information and share this with you. So if your water pump breaks or your roof leaks or you buy the RV that maybe you shouldn't have bought. <laughs> yeah, well, it all worked out. And so that brings us to tip number one for RV newbies, which is just do your research. There are tons of YouTube videos that you can watch. Mm -hmm. RV courses you can yeah, purchase. like RV Education 101. I bought some of their courses. They are mm -hmm. really fantastic. Um, there are tons of blog articles mm -hmm. that are out there that you can read to learn. Right. And, you know, some of some stuff we've learned just because our neighbors were nice enough to share what they are doing and show us what to do. Right. Or we, you know, you can ask questions of your neighbors who have more experience as well. Right. Yeah, but definitely, you know, do your research about the type of RV you might want and the components within it, even down to the campgrounds that you want to go to and the places you want to explore. But um, there's a ton of resources out there, like Mike said, whether it's websites, YouTube channels, Facebook groups, communities. I mean, we love our RV blogger community. I mean, it's just yeah, it's just a really cool experience to get on there and see somebody pose a question and 30 people answer it. You know, it's, it's like really nice. In 30 minutes. Right. Like, <laughs> it's right. crazy. It's great. So, so tip number one is do your research. Hey, guys, we're just enjoying a little breakfast while we're running through tip number two. I was starving and I couldn't wait. Right. And it's just a simple sticky bun and coffee. We don't go all out. <laughs> no, we're not into, simple. not into making bacon and eggs and then right. cleaning all that mess right. up. Don't spend your whole vacation cooking. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, our tip number two is a real simple one. It's just rent before you buy your RV. And we always recommend that to people. Mm -hmm. um, we rented our Class C before we bought it just so we could learn everything we liked and didn't like about the Class C mm -hmm. RV. Like we learned... We can't have an RV with a wet bath. Yeah, that did not, not comfortable for us. And we can't sleep in the bunk in the overcab right. every night. We have to have an actual bed in the back. So mm -hmm. we learned some very important things. So it helped us to buy the right RV when we were ready. Right. 
You might even already own an RV, but you're considering buying larger or smaller, and this would be the perfect opportunity to test that out before you make that financial commitment and realize it's not the right fit for you. Yeah, and on the Facebook group, we see people all the time that are brand new, they just bought their first RV. It's an exciting time, we're excited for them, but we've seen it a hundred times in a, in a year or two. They'll be selling their RV and trying to buy another one, either bigger or smaller, but mm -hmm. the right one for right. them. Uh, because they're finding out what the right one is after they've made the financial commitment to buy it. Right. So rather than do that, just rent an RV for a weekend that you're considering. If you're mm -hmm. considering a travel trailer, just rent a travel trailer and try it out, see how you like it, and mm -hmm. it'll save you a bunch of time and money and you'll make a much better buying decision. Great. So our next tip is when you take your first camping trip to make sure that you don't travel too far from home. Yeah, stay close to home on your first trip. Our first RV trip when we bought our Class C, wasn't our very first trip, but the first one we took after we bought our used Class C RV, we went about an hour away from home. Right. And we had all kinds of disasters happen on that trip. Right. Um, it was a riot, but we had water coming out from underneath the dinette because the water pump, pump froze and <laughs> burst and we basically had a mini flood. Yeah, it was terrible. So. On your first maiden voyage, stay close to home. Our next tip for RV newbies is to invest in discount memberships and subscriptions to help save money and make your camping much, much more convenient. There are discount camping memberships that are available out there that allow you to receive discounts up to 50% when you camp overnight at participating campgrounds. There are other ones that are out there. When you join them, you get free camping at their participating locations. And then there are some subscription services that you can use to find free overnight RV parking. Let's say you're driving from point A to point B, you just need to crash somewhere overnight. Um, there are some tools out there that can help you find free places to stay. And then of course there are trip planning tools that are available, um, which we also find really super convenient. So the point is though, read through all the membership subscription services, pick the ones that make the most sense for you and go ahead and invest in them. Most of the discount camping memberships that are out there and especially the ones that offer free camping will pay that for themselves if you just spend one or two nights. So it's totally worth it if you camp you know, more than one or two nights a year. And then the other subscription services like trip planning tools just make your camping experience and driving to your campground much, much easier. So have you ever shown up to a campground only to be told, we don't have your reservation? <laughs> I thought for sure I made the reservation. <laughs> that brings us to our next tip. And it is no matter how much you have planned your camping trip or your vacation, you have to maintain flexibility because something's gonna change. You're gonna make a wrong turn. You're going to forget to hit reserve yeah uh, and so you have to be flexible throughout your trip and we've had this happen a million times we, and it's all really just boils down to attitude and for us we try to take on an attitude of if things don't go just right it what, was meant to be it's meant to be what right. good thing is going to happen in its place that we are meant to be there for so we've made a wrong turn and ended up discovering area 51 and a brothel in the middle of the <laughs> Nevada desert <laughs> and I forgot to make the campground reservation I really thought I did and yeah. um, they ended up well you know working it out we got like one of the best Even campsites site. in the whole right. campground that's right. happened a couple times to us so yeah. you know just mm -hmm. just roll with the punches but we also plan extra time in our day so we have time like if we're gonna go from point A to point B and it's a six hour drive we know right away there's no way that drive's happening in less than eight hours. Right. No chance. Because we plan ahead and we're flexible that we can allow ourselves time to stop, take mm -hmm. pictures, grab a bite to eat. If there's a scenic overlook, we're mm -hmm. pulling in that thing. I mean, we like to stop and enjoy the journey as much mm -hmm. as we can. So, right. you know, for us, um, it's just a great way to travel and we really get the most out of things that way, we mm -hmm. think. Like you say, we're never late. We're, we're just later, really. you know. And that's very true. We often pull into campgrounds after dark, but yeah. we enjoy the journey. So now that you have planned your trip, our next tip is to get a good GPS or mobile app that's designed specifically for RVs. Yeah, we made a huge mistake when we got our 
first RV and we were out cruising along, we tried using like Waze and even Google Maps to get where we were going. We didn't realize at the time though, that doesn't work. And that's because you can't enter the size of your RV, like how tall you are or how heavy you are into those apps. And so we got stuck at a bridge that we couldn't go under and we created this huge traffic jam. But there's also bridges that have weight limits and things like that. So mm -hmm. if you get a good GPS or a mobile app for truckers or RVers, you can enter in your RV's information and it'll route you so you don't get stuck somewhere that you can't go. Another tip that we recommend is keeping an RV or a camping journal. Document some of the places you've gone, hikes that you've taken. There's a bee on There's my a bee on your sandwich. sandwich. I promise not to eat him. <laughs> <laughs> He's enjoying it more than I am. There he goes. Okay. Like that, for example, we could break down how I almost ate a bee in my sandwich. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've journaled all, all, almost all of our trips. We have one memorable experience pretty much every place we've been. And it's just fun to go back and read through. You know, we all have pictures that we take, but our pictures are really unorganized. Right. There's bazillions of them, mm -hmm. and that's fun to do too. But having a journal is a lot of fun, and Susan likes to write in it while we're cruising down the road, mm -hmm. so it doesn't take up any of our camping time. It's just something to do, you know, while we're jetting down the road. So, mm -hmm. But it's a really cool thing to look back on and kind of relive some of those old memories. Right. And you can even write down some of the things that didn't go quite so well. Yeah. You know, because sometimes, you know, next year when you go camping again, you may have forgotten that that probably wasn't a good idea and refresh your memory because that's how we learn. Yep. When we get to the campground, we can get our campsite set up super, super fast so we can get out and start enjoying things. Which brings us to our next tip, which is assign duties when you get to your campsite. Don't try to do it all alone, because then you'll just get frustrated and exhausted. So when Mike and I show up, he gets out, he sets up the outside, I get everything ready on the inside, and we can get done super fast. Yeah, and sometimes we bring our kids or our grandkids camping with us, and we give them duties as well. You know, our, for example, my kids know where the chairs are, they know where the camping table is, they know where the welcome mat and the, and the uh, adjustable step is when we get to a campground. So they just know to go ahead and get those things set up. It's, I don't know, five, six, seven less things that I have to do. And when we have our little grandson with us, you know, he has his own little special duties. He gets to help light the campfire at night and things like that. But right. And it can even be meals. It can be oh, meal yeah. prepping. You yeah. know, if, if everybody pitches in on what meals are going to be cooked and participates in helping cook them, it also allevi alleviates the burden off of you. Yeah, or everybody can have a certain night they're responsible to make dinner. Mm -hmm. And then that, that helps everybody in the group. So Mike made some chili. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a part of that keep it simple method. You Absolutely. Know? Don't want to spend too much time, just stick it all in the crock pot and let it cook while we went hiking, we went biking. We did a lot today. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we got so. a lot done. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a great meal at the end of the day. So Absolutely. There you go. Right. But our next, uh, our next tip for RV newbies is to use checklists. And um, there are lots of checklists that are available on the internet that you mm -hmm. can print off for yourself whether it's gear to bring or groceries to pack or whatever you want, you can find it out there. But in fact, we even made a checklist for how to set up your camp really fast. Right. When you, when you first pull in, it's a very basic checklist, but we'll put a link to it down below if you'd like to check out the checklist. <laughs> but I think the most important thing that we find, um, because we do use checklists as well, mainly for, you know, packing everything up before we leave, including food, is that we bring the checklist with us and we add to it or we delete from it on every camping trip. And that way our checklist is always current and up to date. Mm -hmm. And because it seems like we always forget something or wish we had something. Right, especially if you're camping in different seasons. True. You know, earlier you may need some bug spray and sunscreen, and later you might need something to keep you warm. You might forget the gloves and the hat or. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. you may have to alter your checklist accordingly. Yeah, and that's very, very appropriate for this time of year because it's fall. You might see the leaves falling in the video. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's like packing for two seasons because during the day it was yes. like, it's like been like 75 degrees and it's pretty warm. And, you know, you have shorts and a t shirt on. And then at night, 
it gets pretty chilly. Right. So we have long pants and our fleeces, and mm -hmm. the first night it got really, really, really cold. cold. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. you know, you, you end up packing for different seasons and things like that, too. Right. So checklists can help you stay organized, not forget things. But the most important thing we found is just keep them with you and revise them as you go, and then you have yourself a really great checklist. So now we're at the end of a long day, relaxing by the fire, having a glass, of wine. a glass of wine, and this brings us to our final tip, which is patience. Um, you have to remember you're on vacation and there are going to be things that go wrong and you need to just take your time, relax, enjoy your journey, whether it's a long car ride, whether it's setting up your campsite, uh, whether it's communicating with each other. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> patience is a must. Right, right. You want to walk away with great memories and an enjoyable experience. So just take your time and, and enjoy the journey. It's all a part of the process. You're not at work, you know, you're right. not at home. You're camping. You might not even be with the kids. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great. I don't know, and, and you know, we, I don't know if you've heard the cars going by throughout the video and, and um, even in other videos that we're making. We got the last campsite that right. was available at this campground. And so it wasn't our, you know, wouldn't have been our top pick. We are right on the road and it's the yeah. noisiest campsite I think we've ever stayed in ever. Ever. <laughs> it's been very frustrating. It's created a mood around the camp today. and. We've had to exercise extreme patience, but you know, we, we uh, were fortunate enough to try to, you know, figure out what we were going to do in place of that. So we ended up taking some hikes and right. bike riding and getting away from here. You got to see some of Hungry Mother State Park in Virginia. Yeah. <laughs> and we shot some video in some other really cool locations that maybe we wouldn't have right. if it wasn't so loud here. So sometimes, you know, just be patient and, and let it take you where it's going to take you and figure out a way to turn, a, you know, lemons into lemonade, I guess is what I'm trying to say. All right. So we hope that you have found these 10 tips useful. Um, we hope that you are able to apply them to your camping trip and you become a seasoned RVer as opposed to an RV newbie one day. And if you have any tips as well, we would love to hear from you. Absolutely. And please, any tips that you have that you think would help other RV newbies, put them in the comments down below. You know, not only do we read all the comments and we try to respond to almost every one that we possibly can. I don't see them all for some reason, but we do try to respond to all of them. But other, uh, other watchers of our YouTube videos, other viewers, will also read through the comments. And so if you have a really great idea, please post it down below because we'll see it other RVers will read them too, and we can all learn and share together, right. uh, which is another really great newbie tip. I think it was the first one of the day, which is research and learn. Research. And yes. you know, this is another great way to do that. So mm -hmm. anyway, we would love to check out all your cool tips and ideas as well. And speaking of check it out, if you'd like to check out some of our other videos, just click right here. And when you do, please remember to subscribe to the RV Blogger YouTube channel. and hit the notification bell when you do, so you'll be notified every single week when we put out a new video. So for Mike and Susan, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.